We're here today to talk about something unique in all of higher education, and that is a university-wide commitment to take every aspect of our work, our education, our research, in a service of addressing climate change, an all-in proposition that everything from our operations as a university uh, to our outreach to alumni will be uh, focused on addressing these challenges. I don't believe anything like this has ever happened before in higher education. And uh, I, I hope you'll agree with me that that's the case. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that what is truly remarkable is that Duke University made investments, you know, in the 1930s, right? In the Marine Lab, in uh, the Duke Forest. So it's an example of gradually elevating the actions that we have taken as a university over almost 100 years in terms of the investments and commitments that we are willing to make. Mm -hmm. The climate challenge is so big that we need everybody doing what they can. And I feel incredibly fortunate to be at an institution that's willing to elevate its entire mission to focus on climate change, because I think that is unprecedented. And we have this extraordinary array of scholars. So what, what are some of the ways that we're, we're reaching out to those mm -hmm. scholars to engage them in this climate commitment? Absolutely. You know, what's built into our DNA as Duke is our interdisciplinary focus. And that really comes shining through because I don't think you can address a challenge like climate change without having multiple disciplines at the table. It's just too big. So having uh, schools like Pratt, like law, like public policy, like divinity, that brings an especial set of values and ethos to the table that is gonna be essential if we are going to act with purpose. Our students coming in year over year, mm. this matters to them. They, it, this is their future, right? Our generation is mm -hmm. leaving them with some pretty serious problems. <laughs> and I feel that as an institution, we now have an opportunity to work with them just to chart a different course. One of the things um, that you and colleagues uh, developed was this uh, pretty ambitious goal of injecting climate and climate literacy into every educational program across yes. the university. So tell me how you arrived at that. One of the distinctive pieces of what Duke can really do is put out into the world um, Every single student who graduates from Duke, undergraduate, professional student, doctoral student, and even our alumni, right? Because that's a huge, you know, footprint that we have across the globe. If we can elevate their level of climate fluency, I believe that we will have achieved an impact at scale that few other places can. Mm -hmm. And this fall, we've now offered our first university course in climate. T tell us a little bit about that Oh my class. goodness, it's so exciting. Emily Bernhardt from Biology and Norman Wurzba from Divinity are teaching our first uh, University 102 class. And first of all, I love the combination of having a biologist and a theologian teach a course. I think that's distinctively Duke and really exciting. It's called Let's Talk About Climate because one of the biggest challenges we find is that there are a lot of people that really actually wanna be talking about climate, but they're intimidated because they think the person on the other side doesn't share their same values or views. And that just becomes a barrier in its own right. So if we can sort of strengthen our muscles for talking about climate, maybe we can make better progress. This is a course that's grounded in a sense of hope mm -hmm. that we can make a difference. For so long, I think people have struggled with the enormity of these challenges. Mm -hmm. They feel so big and sure we can recycle, we can conserve on energy uses, usage and so on. One of the things that you said several years back in a presentation stuck with me. You, you talked about this 80-20 rule that you were following, <laughs> uh, which I, I, I think is exactly the right approach, and it informs this educational project we're on. The 80-20 rule is really about 20% of the time, let's talk about the problem, because we can't ignore what the problem is. Um, but 80% of the time, let's be really investigating what those solutions are and talking about those because I think that's where we become agents of change. Narratives of hope and possibility and solutions orientation give us a sense of agency. And I think that's what we need. And I think Duke can be a place where people come to find that agency and learn how we can do this together. When we talk about being a, a university committed mm -hmm. to climate change, um, it goes well beyond a single school or a single Absolutely. program. And, and I just want to thank you for everything you've done. You've been it, it just wonderful in this. This is the reason I came to Duke. Um, I think as you know, I'm a graduate of the School of the Environment. I feel like I am uh, a living, breathing example of what we want to put out in the world in being able to think in an interdisciplinary way and to pull people together and to lead. And you've given me that opportunity. And 
I mean, I, I hope that this is why we would be that beacon of light for other people seeking to have impact in this particular way. Come and join us. If you're a student, if you're faculty, if you're staff, look at what we're all gonna do together.